Hello everybody and welcome back to another video by Blissful Techno Health. Today I'm going to be showing you guys lesson 6 in my how to use a computer with Windows 11 for beginners series. And in this lesson we're just going to cover some really real basic things on how to use the internet, how to browse the web. There is so much that has changed from when I was young. It's actually a lot easier than it used to be. But there are a couple of different things that I want to show you and some basics that I think are really important. The first thing I want to talk about are web browsers. On my computer, you can see two icons here, okay? I've got Microsoft Edge and I've got Google Chrome. These are web browsers. A web browser is basically a program that allows you to access the content on the internet. Okay, so all the information on the internet is out there. The way you get to look at all that content is through a web browser. There are, like I said, there's multiple different web browsers. Microsoft Edge is the one that comes built in with Windows. It used to be Internet Explorer. I don't think they're gonna have it on Windows. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think they even have it in Windows 11. Internet Explorer was the older one on the older versions of Windows. They had to slowly remove it over time. It wasn't something they were able to do just instantly because so many people were used to it. Looks like I, I would assume they're probably fully pushed over to Microsoft Edge by now. Google has their own web browser here called Google Chrome. There's another one uh, web browser called Mozilla Firefox. There's another one called Opera. Um, Apple uses Safari. At least I still I believe they still use, use Safari. Regardless, it doesn't matter which one you use. As long as you find one that you like, that works for you. I personally like Google Chrome the best. I used to use Firefox the most, but my experience was it was starting to get more buggy uh, over time and it just didn't seem as stable and as fast as Google Chrome. Now that's been a number of years ago since I transitioned from Firefox to Chrome, so Firefox is, could be a lot better by now. But I'm just used to Google Chrome, so that's what I use. But I'm gonna show you both of these browsers. So let's open up Microsoft Edge. Now, if, if you don't have icons on your desktop here, shortcuts, you can find it typically, um, Microsoft Edge especially, uh, in your start menu. It's usually gonna be pinned here in your start menu somewhere. I can see mine here. If not, of course, you can always go to all apps and find it in all apps. If you don't have it pinned, and you wanna have it pinned on your, your taskbar down here, like you can see I have the Chrome icon, you can right click on it and pin it to taskbar or I can click and drag and create my shortcut on my desktop. So whatever works for you. If you have a new computer that you just bought, you will not have Google Chrome usually. It's usually just gonna have the Edge browser. So you would have to download Google Chrome and install it. So let's first take a look at Microsoft Edge. Okay, I just opened up the program. Now, I never use Edge, so there's gonna be very little here that's personalized. Now, it has memorized some of my search data from using Google Chrome and put it in here, but for the most part, it's gonna be pretty bare. But there's still a lot here I can show you. And you can use Edge if you want. It's fine, it works okay. Most IT personnel don't like to use it. They use Google Chrome or Firefox or Opera, like I was saying earlier, but you can use it, it does work fine. Now, with Edge, it's very similar to the other browsers. They've all gotten very similar in look and feel. I can browse the web. Now, I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, you always had those commercials that were like, go to www.whatever.com. Um, and you had to punch the website in to go there. Well, they've made it a lot easier to use. Granted, the .com signifies, the www.whatever the website is.com signifies exactly, that's the address that it is. So it's kind of like a phone number. So if you want to call somebody, you got to punch in their phone number. You want to go to their house, you have to know their address. You know, if you're using GPS, got to punch the G, uh, address into GPS and you can make it to their house. Kind of similar to the internet. If I want to go to a certain website, like let's say I want to go to Etsy.com, I have to come up here into this address bar and actually type etsy.com. That will bring me to that website. 
Now, if I go up here, I, I see a lot of people, they don't ever type the .com, they just search Etsy. They don't hit .com. If I don't hit .com, it's just going to use search. It's going to use a search engine. Okay, now I'll get into more on that in just a minute, but first I wanna cover something. As you can see here on my main page, I can search the web right here as well. Up here is specifically the address bar. Down here is your web, not your, but your, your search engine. Now Edge, Microsoft Edge uses Bing for its search engine, okay? Microsoft Bing. Now, if you wanna to go to a specific website, you go up here, you type etsy.com. You type the ag exact web address. If I wanna to go to blizzard.com, blizzard.com. It's a gaming website, okay? It will take you straight to their website. It's not gonna give you search results. It will take you straight to the website. If I just type blizzard, I could get a variety of things. Okay, it does take me straight to Blizzard Entertainment is the first first search. But I mean, if you type something that's related to other things, you could get other things that you're not looking for. Like Blizzard, it could bring up pictures of blizzards. Or you know, like here we go. If I go to images, you can see all these blizzard pictures. It's not pictures of blizzard. There's a few here, Blizzard Entertainment. I hope that makes sense though. So you can just search for something or if you know the exact address, you punch in the exact address and it will take you there. Now up here, you can see I have different tabs. Up here, th these are called tabs. And I can have multiple tabs open. If I click this plus button, it opens up new tabs. These are very handy. You will probably be using tabs. So let's say I want to be on multiple websites at the same time. I can have all those open in different tabs, okay? So I can have my email open in one, a search engine open one, and two other websites I need to reference at the same time. I have a lot of tabs usually open on my main PC because I have a lot of different websites that I have to access on a consistent basis. Just depending on who you are and what you're looking at, this will change over time what you're doing, but it's, it's, it's important to know about your tabs. You can have multiple tabs open, but if you have too many tabs open, it will start to eat at your random access memory and can slow your computer down. So keep that in mind. So you have your tabs, you have your address bar up here if you know the exact address. You've got search down here. Now I believe, I don't know if Bing does it. No, it doesn't do it. I believe Google Chrome, we'll, we'll, we'll show you later, but you can see here, I typed Etsy.com in the search. It does not take me straight to Etsy's website. It does a search for Etsy.com because it's not the address bar, it's the search engine, okay? This is the, this is the search the web. This is the address bar. I can either search from here, just like I can from down there, or I can punch in the actual address, and it will take me there. If I punch in Etsy.com in the search engine, it will not take me to the exact address. It will do a search and show you search results instead of the exact address. I hope that that makes sense. If you have questions on this, please shoot me a comment down below. So that's the basics of how to start using the internet. You need to know web addresses and how to search. Now, if you want to favorite a website, like let's say I want to favorite um, my own YouTube channel. <laughs> so let's say I go to Blissful Techno Health, okay. I can go to my page, just gonna make some noise. I'll pause that. I can save this. If you're like, yeah, I love Blissful Techno Health. I'm gonna watch every video that he has. I'm gonna subscribe. I'm gonna hit the bell so I see his notifications. And I'm gonna like every video and comment how awesome his channel is. Okay? <laughs> I mean, you can do that if you want. Regardless, you can see over here, I've got an arrow or I'm sorry, a star, not an arrow. If I click this star, it adds it to your favorites. So you can come to it later, it makes it easier to come to. So I can click on favorites and I can save it to my favorites bar or other favorites. You can create other folders, but I can save that here. I can say yes, done. And now if I close that, I have it favorited, but I can access it easily without having to type it in the exact address. 
I can click on these three dots over here. It brings up the menu for Edge. And I can come to Favorites, click on that. And here you can see under Favorites bar, Blissful Techno Health. Favorites is really handy. As I have found it very handy for websites I need to use on a regular basis that have really long, complicated website addresses. Or if you have like a variety, like for me, I have a suppliers that I use to order t shirts, and I have like nine or ten different suppliers that I use. I can go to favorites and I can see all of my suppliers, and I can just click on which one I want to look at. So, favorites is very handy. You can see that there. You can see your browsing history. If I um, come on the menu here, I can come down to history and see that you have your search history. You can see what I've been doing here. That way you can go back, like let's say, and this has happened to me all the time. I'll accidentally close down a window and I didn't mean to and I was searching up something, researching something and I'm like, crap, what was that website? I don't remember what the URL was or what the website was even called. I can come back to search history and go, oh, there it is, bam. So a search history could be nice. You've got different extensions. I'm not gonna go into that, but you can go play with extensions and apps. Etc. Etc. Downloads. If you click on downloads, that will give you a list of all the downloads that you have downloaded throughout time. You know whatever you've got downloaded. So you can click on downloads and do that there. That's the basic rundown of how to use Edge. Okay. So it's pretty simple, straightforward. Gives you a program to be able to access internet websites. Google Chrome. Very similar. If I open up Google Chrome. You can see here, I've got the address bar, just like on Edge. I've got the search engine down here. It's the Google engine instead of the Bing engine. Now, down here you can see, on Google though, I can actually type a URL. Let's see if it does it. Etsy.com. Yeah, and it takes me straight to Etsy.com. So basically, it's like having two address bars and search bars. They're basically the exact same thing. Now, you can see down here, it shows you recently visited websites or ones that you use commonly um, here and it's also very similar for your favorites you have the star over here but instead of called favorites they're called bookmarks so let's say I want to bookmark my Etsy store click on bookmark you know done can okay, I bookmarked it I can come to the three dots just like edge I can come to bookmarks and there it is right there so it saves it under your bookmarks so pretty easy to use, very intuitive really. They've made it so much easier from when I was younger when I was a kid and searching things. I mean, it's, it's grown so much and the programs are so much faster and more intuitive. So pretty simple, that's how you use the internet, that's how you browse the web. I will show you under more tools though, or not, sorry, more, more tools, settings. So I didn't show you this in Edge because I don't use Edge a whole lot, but in Chrome, you wanna be sure of one thing, if you go to settings, and you'll notice a lot of different things in here. You don't really need to play with any of these, but once in a while, this happens to my son all the time. He, he visits websites where this happens. I used to see this all the time with customers. It doesn't necessarily mean you're infected with malware, but a lot of times, someone will visit a website that puts mal... I don't want to call it malware, it, it, it integrates its own search engine. So instead of using Google Chrome, it uses something else. For example, on here you can see I've got a couple of weird ones. Okay, you've got the normal ones, Google, Bing, and Yahoo. We've probably all heard of these three. But DuckDuckGo and I don't even know how to say this, Ecosia. I don't want these. So if you come to your search engine section, come over here, and you can see you've got search engine used in the address bar. So if I go to the address bar and I type search, you know, for potatoes, and I'm searching for potatoes, I'm going to get information on potatoes, but it's using the Google search engine, okay? That's what it's talking about. If I change it to Bing, it'll use Bing. So now if I go here, now it's on Bing, okay, just like Edge. I don't want that though. I want Google. Now, I can manage these on the next bar down here. I can click on that bar and scroll down here and you can see the different search engines that were in that list. I've got this one here. I don't want it. Go away. Delete it. Get out of my life. This one right here. I don't even know where these came from. 
I, I don't even hardly use this computer like I said before in my previous videos. This is a shop computer. I use this laptop for printing orders on my shirt printers. So I don't know where those came from. Regardless, they're there. And I want them gone. So you can remove them. So if you see anything weird, like I don't need Bing. I don't use Bing. It's deleted. I never use Yahoo. All I need is Google. So this is something that is really important to know. If your search engine gets changed, and it's highly possible that it will, that happens a lot of time to people, you can come to search engine in your settings and clear those out here. That's kind of important to know. Just kind of an extra little tidbit. But you can see you've got your tabs up here just like Edge to manage. You've got, like I said, your favorites. You've got uh, your downloads history. You've got um, your history, your, your website history as well. So you can go back there and, and find websites you used before in the past and etc. So pretty basic, easy rundown. That's how you use the internet. Uh, I think the most important thing to, to share with you is just that URL versus a search. Knowing the website address. It really surprised me how many people I met where I'm like, hey, go to, you know, Etsy.com or YouTube.com. It blows, blows me away how many people just type YouTube. They don't type the .com. And they search. And then they go to YouTube. If you just type YouTube.com, it's just going to take you to YouTube.com. You don't have to search. And this can be very important because if I go to like, I'm going to show you in a video, in the next video, how to keep your computer clean. But if I, there's this program called Super Anti Spyware that's a, that's a free program you can use. If I just type Super Anti Spyware, it comes up and it shows this. But if you have a different web browser or if you have a program that's, one of those other search engines, it might not show up first. Or if you mistype it and you accidentally type super ant square because your keyboard doesn't work very well. Okay, thankfully this one came up, but you might get something else. And I've had people download the wrong thing and they end up with viruses on their computer instead of cleaning the computer. So you just want to be sure you're, 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 you know exactly where you're going. Searching can be fine as long as you know you're going to the website you want. And how do you know? Well, if you see above the search result, it says the address superantispyware.com. Superantispyware.com. You know that's the website. Okay, just like you know YouTube. If I just search YouTube, you can see youtube.com. So you're going to youtube.com. You're not going to some hack website that's not real. But it is important to just know the address most of the time and just type in the address. Oh, look at that. The search here doesn't do it, it looks like. Once you get into the search here. Yeah, you can only do it from the main page here. But I hope that makes sense. So if you know the address, just punch it in. And... If you have any questions about that, please shoot a comment down below. I hope this has been infor informative for you. Like I said, these videos are for beginners. A lot of this stuff is really newbie stuff, but you know what? There's a lot of us out there that are newbies that need some help, and I want to be able to help you out. And it's so important to understand this stuff because computers are so prevalent nowadays. You have to have a computer. You have to have. You have to know it. And there's a lot of people out there who haven't had to use a computer until very recently. And it can be a very daunting task to learn how to use a computer if you're not familiar with technology. So I hope this video helps you. And uh, yeah, man, stay safe, make good choices. Subscribe to my channel would be the best choice you can make. And uh, give me a thumbs up. Hey, thanks guys. We'll see you on the next video. Peace out.